Hey everyone, it's me, Rylan. So it is uh, Friday. Holy shit, it's Friday. Um, it's Friday, November 1st, 2018 at 12.58 p.m. And what's today's video about? Hmm. Well, you might be looking around and see some shit around me. Yeah, so if you know stuff about psychology, you might look at this stuff and realize that these are all psychological diagnoses. So let's look around. We've got OCD, bipolar, PTSD, eating disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, self-harm recovery, borderline personality disorder, social anxiety, and survivor which usually means like sexual assault or sexual abuse survivor. I'm taking off my glasses because of the glare. Um, so that's a rainbow of mental illness. Um, these are all mental illnesses that I have been clinically diagnosed with and that I struggle with on a daily basis. Bet you wouldn't have guessed that by looking at me, right? Um, the point of my video is to say that, well, there's two points. The point of my video is to say that there is no fucking way that you would be able to walk down the street and look at me and guess that I have a mental illness in general. There's no way that we would go on a first date or sit down at a coffee shop or have a job interview or have any type of interaction and guess that I have even one mental illness. Or if we go on a second date or a third date or whatever. And if I do disclose to you and tell you that maybe I have one mental illness and I say, hey, I have bipolar. Maybe I disclose to you that I also have OCD. Cool. You know that I have two. Illnesses are invisible. And the reason that I want to make this video is I want to prove that you can lead a healthy, happy, productive life just because you have mental illness. And this is for the people that struggle with mental illness, but this is also mostly for people that don't have mental illness. I am in my 20s and I live in New York. Um, right now I'm sitting in my one bedroom, got a living room, and I have a bedroom in my Bronx apartment and one of if not the most affluent areas of the Bronx. I'm a professional actor. I'm represented by an extremely well-respected management company that I'm so lucky to be represented by that I'm able to do what I love. I pay all my bills by myself. I have a great relationship with my dad, I have a great relationship with a friend that I met in college. I still talk to people from high school. I'm productive and I'm, I'm living the life that I want to lead, but that does not mean that everything is perfect. The social anxiety that I have and the borderline personality that I have completely Fuck everything up when it comes to social interaction and being able to keep, to keep relationships intact. These words surrounding me are just that. They are words. They are clinical diagnoses that are listed in the DSM, which is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. We are in the fifth edition right now. So the DSM-5. 
these words, these labels that have been ascribed to me because I meet the clinical criteria are just words. They do not describe the symptoms that afflict me on a daily basis. The BPD, borderline personality disorder, does not, that word doesn't explain the dissociative episodes that I experience where I become catatonic and I am not able to move or talk for hours on end. The PTSD word does not encompass the hypervigilance that I experience where I am am on high alert and I'm afraid that someone is going to attack me or hurt me or the nightmares that I have. The social anxiety doesn't encompass the fear that I have that everybody is judging me and laughing at me or the parties that I cancel or the loneliness that I feel because I sit in my house alone because I isolate myself because I'm afraid that people don't like me and I hear those voices in my head not voices of other people. I don't I don't hear voices. But I have that mean voice in my head telling me that everyone hates me. That eating disorder. That doesn't cover any of the shit that my eating disorder encompasses. Th th these are just words. I put these labels around myself right now on this video as a way to reclaim myself and say, this is me. I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed that I'm on drugs to help stabilize myself because I've seen what my life is like when I'm not on my mood stabilizer to help myself with my bipolar. It's not fucking pretty. When I'm manic, not cute. Whoops. When I'm not on an anti-anxiety, ugh. So I just, I want to say that you can't look at someone and you can't tell because as I said, you can't look at me and you would never fucking guess. You would look at me and see a human being and be like, ah, okay, maybe, maybe he's a little weird or God, he's kind of emotional, but like you wouldn't know why. You might think I'm a little dramatic or something like that or he's like kind of shy, but you wouldn't know why. And this is not a plug to get followers because, like, I don't give a shit. Like, that's, like, I don't care. But if you were to look at my Instagram, um, if you just, like, look up Rylan Taylor instead of, like, typing in because, like, my Instagram, like, has a lot of dots. But if you were to type in the dots, it's O, like, O-H. So it's O dot hi dot it's dot ry, R-I. Oh, hi, it's ry. You can scroll through all my pictures and see pictures of me smiling and making videos and jokes and all this stuff. And I'm honest about the days that I have bad days and I talk about mental illness and stuff like that. But then when you scroll down and stuff, when I was really in it, you know, there are periods like when you scroll down when I was still self-harming, those weren't pretty days, but you would never guess. Because you can't tell. Mental illness is invisible. Eating disorders are fucking elusive. You would look at me now and never guess at the shape of my body that I fucking struggle. That I have a really bad eating disorder, but you would never guess that. But that's just the card that I am dealt and I am not a victim of my circumstances. I, I mean, is it the greatest thing in the world? Obviously not. But, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I am doing things about it. I go to therapy two times a week, sometimes three when I see my psychiatrist. Um, because I am aware that I have mental illness. And I personally, I want to get better. And I want to work on my interpersonal relationships so that I can have stable relationships in my life so that I can have friends and that I don't cancel on parties and that I'm able to have stable relationships and live a more balanced life. 
But the point that I'm trying to make here is you can't look at someone and guess these things. You don't know that I'm in recovery for self-harm and that for a period of my life, Every single day, I used to take a knife to my skin and I used to cut myself. You wouldn't guess that by looking at me. You wouldn't guess that I have 56 scars all over my body. And I still don't know why I used to cut myself. I don't know if it's because of the fact that I'm a survivor or because I have PTSD or because I have borderline. I don't know why. So what I'm trying to say right now is that I just wish we had more compassion and that we need to end the stigma, that we need to get over the idea that people with mental illness are crazy and that you can spot people, that you can tell who's sick. You can't. Just in the way that I can't look at you and like guess certain things about your personality. I can't look at a person and guess, oh yeah, your mom died last year. The fuck? It doesn't work like that. We all go through things. We've all had trauma in our lives. Horrible things have happened to each and every single one of us, but we don't judge neurotypical people on those things that have happened to them. So why are we doing that to people that are mentally ill? It's not fair. We don't do that to other people, so why are we doing it to people with mental illness? Maybe you're looking at all these diagnoses this whole time and you've slapped labels on me, and maybe you've seen one of these and gone, oh shit, he has that, oh God, I bet he does this. That's fine, but I hope you haven't. We need compassion and we need love. That's really what we need in this world. And that's about it. That's all I have to say.